Moving on to page four, we're going to start talking now about area and perimeter. Remember that the definitions for area and perimeter are already in the vocabulary PowerPoint, so feel free to look those up there. The area is simply the number of square units contained in the interior of a figure. The rectangle area formula is area equals length times width. So that stands for area equals the length times the width. The perimeter of an object is the distance around the edges of a figure. And the formula for perimeter is P equals 2L plus 2W. This stands for perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. In the following two examples, we're going to find the perimeter and the area of each rectangle. In this first one, my area would simply equal the length times the width, which would mean that A equals 3 times 10. Therefore, A equals 3 or 30 meters squared. Whenever we're finding area, because we're multiplying two distances, we will get a unit that is squared. If we had measured this in feet, we'd have feet squared. If we had measured it in miles, we'd have miles squared. To find the perimeter of this rectangle, we use P equals 2L plus 2W, which means 2 times the length of 3 plus 2 times the width of 10. This gives me 6 plus 20, which is 26 meters. Perimeter is simply a distance, therefore the units are not squared. In the second example, I'm going to find area as length times width, and that would be 1.5 times 4, or 6 meters squared. The perimeter is 2 times the length, plus 2 times the width, which gives me 2 times 1.5 plus 2 times 4. When I simplify, I'm going to get 3 plus 8, which equals 11 meters. Just a reminder, area is always unit squared, and perimeter is just unit straightforward. A common problem that we look at in geometry is to find the difference in the area of two shapes. So we're going to start out simply using rectangles to get us started. In order to find the difference in the area, what I'm looking for here is if I took the large rectangle and I subtract the inside rectangle, I'm going to get all of this shaded area here. This is what I want to find the area of. Okay. So for the large rectangle, the area of the large rectangle, area equals length times width, which will be 12 times 10, or 120 feet squared. The area of the small rectangle is also area equals length times width, which would be 6 times 6, which is 36 feet squared. These symbols right here mean congruent. If you have line segments marked by congruent symbols, it means that they are all the same. So if the first one is labeled 6 feet, then all the sides are 6 feet, as long as they have the same congruent symbol. Once I have the two different areas, in order to find oops, sorry, the dis difference in the areas, the difference will simply be the large rectangle minus the small rectangle. So in this case, I would have 120 minus 36, which would give me 84 feet squared. Moving along, we're now going to talk about segments and midpoints. 
Again, the five terms at the top of the page can be obtained from the vocabulary document on the wiki page. Another postulate that's important to know is called the ruler postulate. It simply states that the points on any line can be paired with real numbers, and remember the script R with a double bar stands for real numbers, so that given any two points, P and Q on the line, P corresponds to zero, and Q corresponds to a positive number. So, for example, on this number line, if I were to plot the point X at 2 and the point Y at 8, I would be able to find the distance between these two points by moving the X to correspond to 0, and since I moved it two spaces, or two units, I would do the same to the Y. This would allow me to see that the distance between X and Y is actually six units. X equals two, Y equals eight. To find the, uh, to find the distance between the coordinates, we always use the absolute value. The reason we do that is because distance is always, always positive. Moving on to example one, I would like you to find PQ, QR, and PR on the number line below. Remember that PQ with a line segment or a line symbol above equals the line with points P and Q. When P, Q are written together without a symbol above, this actually means the distance between the points P and Q. For this example, I would like you to plot the point Q at negative 2, Q, the point P at negative three and a half, and the point R at positive two and a half. So there's my three points on this number line. In order to find PQ, which will be the distance between P and Q, I will use the absolute value of the number negative two minus a negative 3.5. When I simplify, this becomes the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3.5, which equals 1.5. This indicates that the distance between these two points is one and a half units. Next, we're going to find the distance of QR. That would be the distance between the points Q and R. In order to do so, we are going to use the absolute value and the coordinate that goes with Q, of course, is negative 2 and we're going to subtract 2.5 for R. In doing so, I get the absolute value of negative 4.5 which equals a positive 4.5. Next, to find the distance PR, which is distance from the point P to R, I'm going to use something called segment addition. I'm going to add the distance from P to Q, which is 1.5, to the distance between Q and R, which was 4.5. And I find out that the distance PR equals 6. This segment addition postulate can always be used to add segments. The postulate says that if Q is between P and R, then PQ plus QR equals PR. This is a very common postulate that we will use time and time again in geometry. 
In the next example, I'd like you to label this line to have the point N at one end, M towards the other end, and a point L somewhere in between. The directions say find LM if L is between M and N and NL, which would be this distance is 6x minus 5 and the distance LM is 2x plus 3. We also know that NM equals 30. That means it is the distance from N to M and it is 30. I can use the addition postulate in several different ways. For a problem like this, what I would do is I would say that NL plus LM equals NM. So in setting that up, I will have 6x minus 5 plus LM, which is 2x plus 3, equal to 30. At this point, I simply combine like terms and simplify. So I will get 8x minus 2 equals 30. Of course, I would add 2 to both sides okay and get 8x equals 32 divide by 8 and I find out that x equals 4 however I'm not quite done with any word problem it's always important to go back and ask yourself what is it they're looking for me to find they want to know the distance LM what I have found is what x represents so to finish the problem I need to go back and plug x into the value for LM since LM equals 2x plus 3, and I now know that x is 4, I get 2 times 4 plus 3, which tells me that LM equals 11.